Yeah, Mr. Costin, I, I wanted to just uh, uh, ask a couple of questions to make sure that I understand. Um, and forgive me, Chair, <laughs> if this has been asked before, but I want to talk about licensing uh, for manufacturers. And is there any intention, can you be clear on the intention around allowing or not allowing companies to get a license that would be foreign owned or foreign controlled? Is that, uh, is, is that any kind of consideration in your, uh, in your licensing regime? So as it, so thanks for the question. Um, as, it, as it stands today, um, foreign ownership is, is allowed. There needs to be uh, a headquarters in Canada though. The license is, the license is fixed to the place of business in Canada. So if there's a, um, uh, if a company is based in Canada and it has a parent company that's, that's U.S. based, as, as an example, that will be permitted. So um, you mentioned also, and, and okay, so that's very clear. Um, you mentioned also that you want to make sure that criminal elements uh, don't find their way into the legitimate manufacturing. So we have right now a, a very large percentage uh, expected, I mean they're active now, but a very large <coughs> percentage of the manufacturing capacity of the future is going to be in the hands of public companies, publicly traded companies. And uh, we've seen it in the media that there have been some interesting corporations in in uh, tax havens and in uh, places where, uh, where anonymity is guaranteed uh, that are already owning significant blocks of stock in these public companies. Um, how are you going to manage all of that? Is there a, a strategy that you've got? If a 100% foreign controlled company from Colombia decided to buy one of our uh, Manufacturers have, uh, I mean, this, this strikes me as an area where the saying that you're going to do it and the doing that you're going to do it is going to be difficult. So, again, thank you for the question. I think the, this is, you know, in my, my remarks I made reference to the fact that, you know, we've, we've accumulated, I think, some fairly relevant experience in the space over the last number of years. And so maybe I can just sort of make a couple observations around um, kind of the nature of the controls as they exist today and, and how we foresee them being relevant in the future to maybe ward off some of the concerns that you're describing. So there's a, a, a couple different features that get talked about with respect to our current regulations. They often get talked about in isolation of one another, and I'm going to try and talk to them together as a, as a bit of a system, because they do work in consort with one another. So uh, the first is actually with respect to the personnel, like who, who, who is running the operations in, in Canada. Um, you, you may know or, or you may not know that um, the current regulations, as well as our, our vision, our proposal for how the new regulations would, would work, look to isolate and identify certain persons in the company who effectively have a controlling behavior. Now that is either a c controlling as in they physically handle and they're responsible for the movement of cannabis or they otherwise can influence in a meaningful way the behavior uh, of, of the, the company, so the board of directors as, as an example. And uh, you can't get a license, a Health Canada license, unless you've been uh, vetted very, very, very carefully, and, and, and again, I'll, in the interest of time, I'll speed up. The vetting is not simply a criminal background check. It is a, typically it takes many months, if not a year. It involves many different levels of security agencies in Canada and outside of Canada. So take your example of Columbia, perhaps, um, where we look, uh, we do effectively a complete 360 look at the person and their associations. And the associations piece is really critical because the regulations and the way that the, the authorities are defined is it's less about understanding whether you yourself may or may not have a criminal background or, or a, a characteristic that is a, of a concern of us. We understand that that can actually be fairly easy to, to identify. It's more the environment in which you have existed and worked in. And do you have associations? And so the, the vetting is really oriented to understanding what are the networks in which you exist 
and do any of those networks present a threat to the integrity of the system? So once we've satisfied ourselves that you don't present, not between you, but the universal you, uh, don't present that threat, uh, a security clearance can be granted. So there's a, a whole constellation of issues around the people. Again, I'll, I'll speed up in the interest of time. Equally, there are a number of regulatory provisions around the physical security of the environment. So uh, how the, the, the operations are safeguarded in the context of the community, fences, video cameras, secured environments, and so on and so forth. And the final dimension that helps to maybe answer at the how do we ensure that the operations are controlled adequately in Canada, it gets to uh, reporting, right? So there's a significant uh, um, uh, responsibility on the part of a regulated uh, company uh, to uh, provide us with very, very detailed information regarding their, their, their activities, <coughs> production activities, how much quantity is, is held in inventory, how much is sold, how much is destroyed, such that we can track it to literally the last gram. So where we're concerned with the diversion of product, you know, out the back door or the inversion of product that's been produced illegally and it's being kind of washed into the new market. Yeah. And then the last thing I'll say, because I think it actually gets maybe to the heart of your question about tax havens, is what we don't have today, which we hope to have in the future, is the ability to <laughs> compel financial information right. whereby we can look not only at everything that I've just described, right. Where the um, money went. But financial activities, again, with a view of identifying and red flagging anything that causes concern uh, that we would take action upon as a regulator or we were, where we would want to involve uh, law, the law enforcement community. So it's a bit of a long answer, but it's a really, really important question. Thank you. Uh, Senator Tanis. Yeah, I'm good. Okay, a supplementary, I understand, from uh, Senator that, Scott. On that specific note, I, 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 I like everything you say. But there is, you know, these, you know, these the, the criminal element is extremely well organized. And I remember, remember a senior RCMP officer told me this many years ago, 10 years ago, that there's some very prominent Canadian corporations which were basically financed by organized crime. And they washed the money, and today they're honorable, but not the last generation. You know, and so you will, you know, let's say, you ask Senator Tennis to, to stand up, you know, to be the representative of this corporation, and he can get a lot of money. You'll find he's clean, 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 but he may be associated without anybody knowing it with organized crime. Like, how do you, in other words, I, I know all the procedure you're going through, but there's been immense contrary exceptions to that where we see organized crime, they're smart, and they got a lot of money, they can employ the best people, and I'm concerned they're gonna get around your measures, around your controls. So I, I, I certainly don't want to um, come off as sounding naive or, or, or anything like that and, and, and completely uh, uh, I'm aware and, and accept that um, there are always going to be <coughs> efforts to kind of circumvent the, the rules. I, I, I would, to your point about associations though, just so that it's, it's, it's really clear, um, understanding that that's the behavior, you know, that they put kind of somebody who's clean to front the company and really there are a lot of strings attached and, and, and that person is able to be manipulated in, 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 in you know, uh, nefarious ways. Um, that's, what, that's what the vetting is really about, to understand, going back, frankly, decades in understanding what were the business associations, what are the family associations, the tremendous amount of cross-referencing to understand whether, um, and, and again, perhaps at, a, at another point in time, I could, could share some examples of the, the, the nature of the associations that we've been able to identify through that close vetting. It takes time, uh, it involves a lot of different agencies, but, but what we're attempting to do is, is get at, I think, the very issue that you're putting your finger on, which is an understanding that there's a lot of fronting that can occur. And so we try to get as, as deep as, as we can. Um, be, well, be, good, good luck, but I gotta admit, I'm not 100% I'm not convinced. I'm not, I, boy. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Chair. Thank, thank you. you.